A drug-resistant superbug, a better HPV vaccine, and new testing recommendations for the number one cause of cancer death. Well, those are just some of the biggest health headlines in health. And here with what you need to know is NBC News medical contributor Dr. Natalie Azar. Also with us, Dr. Devi Numpy Upper Umpil, who's an assistant professor at NYU School of Medicine. Doctors, good morning. Good, good morning. to see hey, you. Nice to see you. Dr. Devi, your last name is an eye test. So we <laughs> yeah. know that. I think she did well. I hope job. I did your yeah. family yeah. proud Perfectly. because they have a wonderful daughter. Um, Dr. Azar, let's start yes. off with you. This is a new um, suggestion that people who quit smoking years ago should now still be screened with a CT scan. Yes. What's the story there? This differs from an old recommendation where we used to perform chest x-rays on smokers, which really have a very low, low sensitivity to pick up lung cancer. The new recommendation is for a yearly, what's called a Low dose, CAT, low dose CAT scan it has a lower dose of radiation in people who are between the ages of 55 and 80 mm -hmm. who are either current smokers or quit within the last 15 years and have something that we call a 30 or more pack year history of smoking, which mm -hmm. basically amounts to a pack a day for 30 years. Wow. All right. So, okay, Dr. Devi, over to you. Let's talk about the new HPV vaccine that's out now. It's supposed to be better than what was on the market currently. So tell us how it's improved and who this is recommended for. Well, just like the flu, there are different strains of HPV and it causes cervical cancer. It can also cause other types of cancer as well, like anal cancer, penile cancer. So this new uh, vaccine covers more strains than the previous one, so it can protect more people. Now, pap smears, they actually saved so many lives, right, by catching cancer early. Mm -hmm. This vaccine can actually prevent you from developing that cancer if you get it young enough. So it's for girls who are 9 to 26 mm -hmm. and boys who are between the ages of 9 and 15. So there are benefits it's for men to get the vaccine as well? Of course, yeah. So basically, you know, women catch HPV from men, right? So if you vaccinate both, then you have much less chance of uh, actually spreading it between the two. One little point I want to make about the HPV-9 is that if your child or you yourself have already received the HPV-4, which was the previous Gardasil, you're not a candidate for the new one. So this is for people who are getting it for the first time. It's a series of three shots, and a lot of kids aren't getting the full series, which leaves them incompletely protected. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're a parent or you're doing it yourself, make sure that you complete the series. And last week we talked a lot about this superbug, 18 people um, sickened by this. First of all, what is the superbug and how is it passed around, Dr. Debbie? So this is actually this is a bacteria that's in the gut that can infect people but the thing is you don't always realize that you have it right away it's resistant to antibiotics you only realize that you're carrying it when your immune system becomes weak and then actually the bacteria attacks you so the reason it's dangerous is because our usual antibiotics some of our most powerful antibiotics don't work against it so right now the hospital is actually sending home kits to people who might be at risk so they can find out if they're carriers of this bacteria mm. what part of the story does the super bug though play a larger picture in terms of viruses becoming more resistant to antibiotics? No, absolutely, Natalie. Yeah. And that's certainly the backstory here is that we've been using widespread, what we would say, non judicious use of antibiotics oh, over wow. the years, prescribing them much too frequently um, for people who may not, may, may have a viral infection. You know, antibiotics are meant only for bacterial infections. Right. So this is another another sort of nail in the coffin in terms of this more widespread antibiotic resistance that we've been seeing for the last number of decades. Dr. Devi, on to another topic. I've heard in the middle of this winter weather, a lot of people saying, I'm depressed. They say, I'm in a bad mood, I'm feeling low. There is a such thing, though, as seasonal depression, right? That's true. It's seasonal affective disorder. So it's related to the lack of sunlight. When we're in the winter days, you know, they're a lot shorter, right? So people have a lot less exposure and their biological clocks, their daily clocks get affected. So there are things that you can do. You know, you might feel down, you might feel depressed, less energetic. I mean, the best thing is to try to match your schedule to the actual sunlight hours, right? Now, for some of us, that's not always possible. So the best thing you can do, you know, if you have to work early mornings or work late at night or irregular hours, you can actually buy bright light therapy. This is a specific type of lights that simulates the sun. So basically, it'll help you set your clock again. And sometimes you can use other supplements like melatonin as well to try to regulate your clock. Oh, so that's a good point. You can actually yeah. supplement. And you know what I, think, what I think is interesting is that in the wintertime, there's a normal shift in energy levels. Right. We all feel that. Mm -hmm. And I think three like little pearls to, for people to think about do I have that or do I actually have seasonal affective mm -hmm. disorder would right. be, does your depression happen at the same time two years in a row, usually gets better in the spring? Do you have a family history of seasonal affective disorder? Because that raises your risk. And also some atypical symptoms of seasonal affective disorder, carbohydrate craving, oh. weight gain, irritability, not getting along with others, 
not dealing well with rejection. I think like yeah. everyone's going to sit there and say, yeah, it sounds That's like me. me. But, you know, there are some very typical <laughs> symptoms of depression, but there are a few that are more specific to seasonal affective disorder. You can screen yourself, discuss with your doctor if you think you might have it. Interesting. All right. Important health information. Mm -hmm. Doctors, thanks to you Thank both. You. Thank you. Thanks so much.